Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today we're going to be doing spring tear tray DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. Now we're going to be doing a total of three spring tear trays today. So I have three different spring themes. The first one is going to be a spring bird tear tray. We're also going to be having spring flower tear tray and even a spring butterfly tear tray. So I will be sure to include chapters below if you wanna hop around in today's video, but if not, let's get started on the bird one. This is the tear tray that I'm decorating today. It's my round wood one, and I had Easter on there before, so it was empty. I'm gonna use some of this wired garland from the Dollar Tree. I love it, because it's got like little white buds and little green leaves and this was so easy I just wrapped it around cut it down to size and winded it upon each other I didn't need to hot glue it or anything to attach it to my tear tray and I told you I love this sign so much that I bought two right so I might as well use both but it's too big for a tear tray but these new signs from the Dollar Tree are perfect for all of my tear trays they fit perfectly like um, I use them kind of horizontally on the tops but you know, vertically on the bottom, they still fit. They have those in all different colors, like white, black, the wood. And so I'm gonna use this canvas and put it on that little blocky Dollar Tree sign to make a smaller tear tray sign for my bird tear tray. So same thing, I'm just having to remove the canvas from the frame that's on there. And be sure to save your sawtooth hangers that are on the back of your canvases um, because they are great little um, hammer in hangers for other DIYs. Just trying to get my corners out. Sometimes a pair of pliers can come in handy there. And all I'm gonna use um, on the canvas is the bird part. I thought we can make a cute little bird sign for the top of my tear tray. And this was kind of my inspiration piece for my entire bird tear tray DIYs. Um, kind of gonna go with this kind of color scheme and theme for the whole tray. So I just draw that out with an ink pen on the back of the canvas. And this canvas is so easy to cut. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it down to size. I got a pretty good job done there, but I do want you to kind of see that brown wood um, slightly around the edges. So I'm gonna go down and just trim down the sides just a little bit so that you're gonna be able to see a little bit of that brown wood peek through because I'm gonna be using a lot of that color wood. I want it really a very rustic um, spring tear tray. So I think that looks pretty good like that. And so we're ready to put this together. We're just gonna simply put Mod Podge on the back of the canvas. I probably used way too much, I always do. The Mod Podge comes out and so it's so thin, it always comes out too quickly for me. And a Mod Podge that to the front of our sign. I'm just gonna use that baby wipe to kind of smooth that out, kind of clean up all of the excess, but also using some of it to seal the top of the little bird sign too. And as you can see, I still had more glue in there when I kind of scrape it down. So I'm gonna scrape that, kind of clean up the excess Mod Podge. I had way too much. And then I'm gonna go over the top of it and just seal it down some more. And it's so pretty, I love the sign. Once I got it all glued down and dried, I decided I kind of wanted to go with that groove that's in it and kind of cut it to look like two different boards, right? So I'm kind of feeling in the canvas exactly where I need to cut. And then just going in with my razor blade and kind of cutting that canvas down where I can kind of make it look like two parts to kind of give the little sign some more character. Trying to open it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with a sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and sand it to kind of make it look rustic and make sure you can kind of see that seam in there. Just a little fun detail to make your sign look a little bit more rustic. 
And these blue colors are perfect to go with my coastal theme of my house. It looks really cute together. So that's our first DIY for our little bird tear tray. And I'll show you how I put that together once we're done with all of the DIYs. But this is how it turned out. Isn't it cute? I just love that image. I think it's beautiful. Okay, our next DIY, I got this little blue chunky bird at the Dollar Tree and this little flower candle holder from the Dollar Tree. Now, one of y'all, I'm trying to remember who, gave me this idea. She did this with like her, I think her, a chicken. She said it looked like a nest. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to mix a little ivory with some antique wax by Waverly. Basically just wanted a tan color and I didn't really have anything. And then I'm going to go over the entire candle holder with that to kind of give it more of a nest feel, less of a green feel. So it doesn't matter what color you get. If you're gonna paint it, you can make it any color you want. I just flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. And basically I just wanna make a very simple little nest um, for my little bird to sit on my tear tray. It's gonna help it sit up and it's gonna kind of make, make it look cute. Then I distress all over with the Antique Wax by Waverly to give a little bit more brown, a little bit more texture to it. I'm gonna do that on the sides as well. Just distressing with the Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of give it that nest feel. Okay, we got that all dried. I thought a little bit of nesting material would look cute in there too to kind of add to it. And so I'm gonna use just a little bit of Spanish moss just a tiny bit, kind of can peek out the sides of the bird to kind of make it look like a nest. And then sit my little blue bird on there. The color is perfect for my tear tray. And I think this is gonna look really cute on the top of my tear tray as well. Just trimming up any um, crazy filler that's sticking out. And there we go, our little bird sitting on a nest. It does look like a nest, right? And here is my little bird. I think it's super sweet and what a great idea. Okay, the next DIY is so easy. This is a garden pick from the spring section at the Dollar Tree. Um, they had a couple different versions. Doesn't really matter which one. This one has flowers on it. I thought it was cute. And it's so easy to use pliers to remove the little pick off these. I've used these in other spring DIYs and now I have a cute little birdhouse that I can use. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the galvanized metal. I think that's cute. But I thought we could like use like a blue paint pen, like kind of this mint green color and just go in and kind of provide a little bit of color on the flowers just to provide a little color, a little fun to the like boring galvanized metal. But basically that's the only area I'm gonna paint is just that little detail on there. I'm gonna leave the rest of it, the galvanized metal. And then I'm gonna take a little Spanish moss to fill inside. It's all open at the bottom to kind of make it look like a nest. And then I'm gonna use a little white model magic from the Dollar Tree to just form some little balls and just squish them into a couple little eggs to put in there. You could always use colored Mod Podge if you wanted colored eggs. I'm gonna hot glue mine in there so they don't go anywhere. Um, sometimes I can't find the Model Magic at the Dollar Tree and I find it at the Dollar General as well. And I think it's even cheaper there. So I think two eggs, I'm just gonna leave mine white, are gonna be super cute in there. I'm just gonna kind of glue those in the nesting material and we have a little birdhouse that is gonna be just the perfect size for a tear tray. And it was so easy to put together. So here's our little galvanized metal birdhouse with a few little surprise eggs inside. Okay, now these I just happen to have left over from Easter. I have no idea. I've had these forever. Um, so I'm going to use them because they're kind of perfect. But just kind of showing them to you so you can kind of see how they're put together. If you wanted to kind of make your own eggs and make your own nest, it wouldn't be too hard. 
And then check out these adorable little birds that I got at the Target dollar spot the other day. They're a little expensive for the size of them. They're $3 a piece. But look how beautiful they are. This one's like aqua and this one's like a sky blue color. One's kind of standing up. One's kind of like leaning down. And normally I'd like them to be like $1.25 like at the Dollar Tree. But they were so cute that I decided to go ahead and go with them. I think they're going to be perfect for the tear tray. I'm going to use this one just as is. But the other one, I thought we could make a little DIY um, birdhouse using one of these cloches for the shape from the Dollar Tree and then some of that wired jute also from the Dollar Tree. Now, this was a little experimental, but it worked. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is use the cloche as it's like the perfect shape for a little tiny birdhouse, right? Um, just as the shape to kind of um, make this work. You know, this has the wire in it, so it's gonna keep shape. Um, but I kind of need a starting point. And so what I do is just kind of wrap that around um, my cloche like that. I probably should have glued the ends because the ends of this always frays so badly, especially if you've been working with it a little bit. Um, but I'm going to cut them all a little bit longer here and fold them inside. So I do have a little bit extra to work with if I need to. But I just went around the shape of the cloche with my first one. And then I'm going to start here on my second row, just doing a crisscross, like an X shape over my first wire jute. And you're going to want to use some like heavy duty scissors to cut that too. Then I'm going to kind of go in between these two, pull it down, crisscross over the top, cut it down to size and secure it too. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. And it's totally giving me that birdhouse vibe, but I need it to be open with like no plastic in there. So I thought I would take some of the thinner Dollar Tree brown rope to go around the bottom of the birdcage to make a ring. So I have something to attach all of the little wire jute to and we'll have a little bit of a structure. Now, this step is a little tricky. What I wanna do is make sure that the top stays in place. So I grab some burlap from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut down a little burlap circle, something that's gonna match, but kind of serve a purpose. And then I'm gonna glue that on the very top of my birdcage to each one of those wire jutes to kind of keep it together. Um, just for the next step so it doesn't all fall apart. And I'm being careful not to glue it to the plastic cloche because I wanna be able to pull that out after my next step of the bird cage. So that looks pretty good. And you can see the fraying that's going on on the wire jute. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue the rope just to the wire jute trying to avoid um, gluing it onto the plastic again. And I'm just going along the base here so that I can cut off all of that extra wire jute that's frayed and that won't cause any problems. So just going all the way around, trying to keep the spacing fairly even as I go until I get to the end, cut it down and kind of glue it to itself there at the end. So we have the structure of the birdcage. Since I used the wire jute, I think it will keep its shape. So I just pull down all of the wires to unhook them from the cloche. And then I have to wiggle it kind of back and forth to get it out because you know, there were a few areas probably where I glued the rope down that was a little bit glued to it. So just kind of disconnecting those. And then I can just wiggle the little plastic part out but it did a great job of giving me that exact kind of shape and size that I wanted. So now that I have it all put together, I just have to go around and cut off my extra wire jute, all of the frayed mess there at the end, trying to get it as close to the rope as I can, just to kind of give me a clean edge. 
And I'm really glad I did this little bird DIY. I think it turned out so cute. I could kind of see it in my head, but I really didn't know if it would work. And I had an extra one of those bee cloches because I planned to make it into a beehive. <laughs> and so there's our little bird cage. Isn't it cute? Now, the only thing I think it needs is a bird and a base. Now, for the base, I needed something that was about that size, and I kind of wanted something that was wood. And so I'm going to use one of those little wood slice coasters. Um, they have these at the Dollar Tree now, but I actually got this one at Dollar General, I think, before they started carrying them at Dollar Tree. And they're just called coasters. You get like two in a package. And I thought like the wood bark would go great with the bird theme. And it's the perfect size. So I'm just going to sit my little target bird on there and put the little bird cage right on top. Kind of a miniature version of the little bird cage from the dollar, the dollar spot at Target. And this is how it turned out. And it's just the perfect size for one of these little birds from Target. And here's my little DIY bird cage. Super cute. And don't worry if you can't find like little bird cages and stuff like this, because you can usually DIY just about anything and it turns out really cute. Okay, I found this at the Dollar Tree the other day. I thought it was very spring. It's just a bottle with flowers all over. I like it kind of as is. I thought about kind of putting something in it, but I kind of like the simplicity of just a glass bottle with flowers all over it. Doesn't necessarily have birds on it, but I think it's gonna totally go with my like spring vibe um, on the bottom of my little bird tear tray. So basically, I just removed the tag and it is ready to go. I think the flowers on it are really lovely though. Aren't they pretty? And I am going to do some flowers on this tear tray as well since it is a spring theme. Now I want to make a little bird sign and I got these at the spring section at Dollar Tree, these little chalkboard birds. And I'm going to use that other wood slice coaster um, from Dollar General. But look, see, these are the ones that I got at Dollar Tree the other day. Very similar, almost the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than the coaster ones from Dollar General. And I thought this would make a really cute background for a little bird sign using that little chalkboard bird. I bought those kind of for the structure of the bird ornament, not necessarily for the chalkboard. Um, and so if you flip them over, they're wood on the other side, right? And they're just cute little birds that I thought would be really great size DIY for a tear tray. Kind of like that. And then we can just stand it up. Now I want to leave like the wood coaster slice, you know, wood. And so I thought I would just go in and paint this. And again, I'm testing out some of that Dollar Tree paint. This is like, um... I kind of remember the color. I think it was called tea something. Now I'm going to have to look it up and put it in the description. But it's a very soft blue. And I'm just kind of looking for, you know, a very light, rough um, stain on this. So it actually worked great. And you get a pretty large bottle of it for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. Ready to attach my little bird to my little wood slice. And it does have that little hole in it because it was an ornament. So I'm going to use one of the little ornament hangers that came with it and just tie a very simple little finger bow just to cover that up. Just a decorative little tip to cover those annoying little holes without having to spackle it or anything like that. And I thought this was just a very simple, rustic little bird DIY that we can use on my tear tray for spring. Now I do want it to stand up, so I'm gonna use a couple of those mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and just kind of glue a couple of them together and then to the back of the wood slice. And we have just a very simple little standing sign. It doesn't take much to stand that up. Super simple, 
But I think it turned out really cute. Here is our little a bird sign. I love it. I love the simplicity of it and it gives me a pop of blue on my tear tray. Okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these little wood birdhouses from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have different ones. This one's got like the two holes, the two perches, doesn't matter. But these are the perfect size for a tear tray, especially for a bird theme. I'm gonna go over the whole thing with some Antique Wax by Waverly, and then I'm gonna wipe it off with a baby wipe because I kinda want that medium wood finish, not necessarily like a dark stain on that. And I'm gonna do that all over. I just wanted a very rustic looking little birdhouse that's gonna go well on this tear tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and like do all four sides, also underneath the roof line, trying to cover up all of the raw wood and then following that up with a baby wipe, kind of make it a little bit lighter. You guys know I love my Antique Wax by Waverly. It's just so much faster and easier than staining. And then I'm gonna use the excess to kind of do the base as well, the top of the base. And then I'm gonna put it up on something. So I thought I might as well try to stain the bottom as well, just so none of the exposed raw wood is visible. Now I told you I wanted it to look rustic, right? So I'm also gonna go over it and distress it with ivory all over to give me that like chippy wood, weathered, kind of like farmhouse vibe on this, wiping the excess off with the baby wipe, blending it in, and it really made it look old and weathered, which was the look I was going for. Now, I think it looks pretty good like that. I did want to add a touch of color though. So I'm using like a mint green paint pen and I'm just doing like the edges in that color just to bring in a little bit of blue and I just outline a few things just to bring in a, a few pops of color, but mainly it's just gonna be the stained wood. So I go around the base and the roof line with it. I'm also gonna outline the little holes in the birdhouse just to provide a little color there. I already colored in like the, the tips of the little perches as well, just to make it more fun. Then we're gonna make a base with those Dollar Tree Jenga blocks again. I kind of like these that have like the two different colors of the Jenga blocks are kind of cool. And I'm gonna use like a combination of six of them to make kind of a big enough base to hold this up, but give it a little bit of height. I wanna use this on the bottom of my tear tray and I want it to be big enough. So I'm just gonna make a base. I glue a three together and then three together, and then I'm gonna glue those together side by side to make the perfect size little stand for our little birdhouse. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave them that stain. I have a kind of a plan to disguise those, and I thought it would be cute if they looked like they were covered in moss. So I'm just gonna use some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and just kind of crazily glue that all over the four sides that's gonna be visible. It's gonna kind of cover up the seams there and those little Jenga blocks. You just make it look a little bit more uniform and I like the pop of color with the green moss coming in there. So just all four sides. And now we can attach that to our little birdhouse. Just a little hot glue on top and stick it on there. Super cute. Now you could kind of see inside the birdhouse a little bit there um, where there's like raw wood inside. And I do want it to look like, you know, it is an occupied birdhouse. So I'm gonna take a little Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and just kind of pop that in that holes the holes of the birdhouse, just to give it that little nest feel. I'm not gonna do eggs or anything in this one. It's kind of too small, I think. I don't think you'd be able to see them. But that looks cool and it's a nice contrast against the green moss on there, I think. So there's our little rustic wood birdhouse. I love the little touches of the blue or mint green color. Um, 
I think that just makes it pop a little bit and the little stand covered in moss. Perfect for the tear tray. Now I found this at the Dollar Tree. They had like these in like butterflies, different animals, but I love the bird one. It's like a lighter color of wood and it's got like blue, pink, and orange flowers cut out on it. It's so cute. And it's the perfect size for a tear tray. It's already got a stand. I'm gonna dip a baby wipe and a little antique wax by Waverly. And we're gonna do a very simple little medium stain doing it that way over the existing wood that was on there. You can still see the wood grain through it, but it's gonna make it look a little bit darker to match the finishes on the other DIYs we're doing today. So that was simple, really easy. Then I'm gonna distress the flowers because they're a little bright with a little ivory, just to tone them down a little bit. And there's our little bird. I think it's so cute for our tear tray and it's very colorful for spring. I think that's gonna look great with everything else we made. And this is another one of those wood signs from the Dollar Tree, I love these. This is the same uh, medium wood color as the first one that we made for the top of the tear tray. And then I got some of these little mirror wall stickers from the Dollar Tree with this little bird and flowers. And I thought it would be perfect to make a little bird sign for our tear tray. Now, whenever you DIY these little mirror things, they do have a film over them. Sometimes I forget, because it's a little hard. You gotta kind of scratch them with your fingernail just to get it started and then peel that off and it's gonna give you that mirror finish. Otherwise, you're gonna get stuck kind of painting directly on the, the plastic wrap, which you're not really supposed to. Then I'm gonna use that same light blue paint from the Dollar Tree. And we are gonna kind of paint that in one direction with a brush. It is gonna leave a little bit of a brush stroke through with the mirror showing through. So I do go over it with a couple coats to make it have a little bit better coverage. Now be careful if you're using a heat gun to dry these because I kind of melted mine a little bit. I didn't know they were so fragile, but you'll see in the final result. I totally melted mine a little bit. But I'm gonna kind of do the same exact um, layout they had because I think it's gonna be the perfect size if I were to use this sign like vertically like this on my tear tray. Some flowers. I used a little bit of hot glue even though they were already stickers. You might not want to because I didn't know they were heat sensitive. Luckily I was only using a small amount. Another flower right here. And then the other one is like a branch of flowers. They're all kind of connected. And it's gonna fit perfectly up here at top. And there is our little bird sign. I did try to go in there with my heat gun a little bit to make sure it was dry. And you can see a little warping on top right there. That's what happened with my heat gun. It started to melt and kind of warp a little bit. So you might not want to use heat on these at all. Lesson learned. But I think it turned out super cute. What do you think? Okay, another DIY. I found this in the spring section at the Dollar Tree, these adorable little birdhouses. I thought we could paint this with that Dollar Tree a blue paint as well and kind of distress it, make it look old too. But look how cute it is with a little bird cutout on front. I thought that'd be perfect for a bird tear tray. They have these in like different styles. I was just looking at them there today. They have like different flowered ones and stuff as well. I'm gonna go over all of the actual birdhouse itself with that blue paint. And then I plan on staining the top of the roof um, with some antique wax by Waverly, kind of making it two-toned. This paint is thin enough where it kind of provides a little bit of a stain. Um, and some of the areas don't want to paint too well, but that's okay because I'm going for kind of like a rustic vibe on this. So I think it's going to work. I'm just trying to make sure that I have everything covered, including the base with the blue. 
and it has like a little rope hanger on there. I think that's cute. It's kind of in the way, but I'm going to leave it there. And then I'm just going to use a baby wipe that I dipped in Antique Wax by Waverly on the roof. It's going to give us that same medium wood stain. Super easy. And then I'm also going to use that to distress the rest of the blue birdhouse kind of all over just to make it look weathered and a little bit older, have a little bit more character, right? And you can always go back in there with your original color if you think that you've distressed a little heavy. It's so cute. I love it. And it's really the perfect size for a tear tray. It's just the right height. I think it's going to look really cute. I do put a little bit of Spanish moss inside, kind of like I did with the other one, to kind of make it look like birds have been nesting in there. Kind of threw the bird cut out there. I think it's ready to go, and I think it's perfect for my bird theme. Here is our little bird birdhouse. And I'm loving the color. Super cute. Okay, now I wanted some greenery, and Dollar Tree is really stepping up the game on the greenery. This is eucalyptus, so I thought I would cut this down into smaller pieces here. And we can kind of use these all over the tear tray. It's going to give me that kind of like tree vibe that I'm going for with all of my birds. So I just cut that down into three longer pieces. I'll probably use those on the bottom since they're rather large. But aren't they cute? And then I also got this um, little pick at the Dollar Tree as well. And what I'm going to do on this one is just kind of pull these off. This is kind of like a shorter squatty version of some greenery. And these are going to be perfect for the top and any of the little spots all around the tear tray that need a little touch of greenery. And then since it's spring, I wanted some flowers and I wanted to do that kind of light pink flower that was on the bird canvas. So I'm using these little dogwood flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pull them off. I want lots of them because I want to be able to scatter those all over the tear tray to bring in a little color and a little spring to our bird DIYs. Now let's put this tear tray together. I have already wrapped the little garland around the edges of my tear, and now it's time to add all of the fun bird DIYs. Now don't go anywhere because I still have two more spring tear trays for you today.
this is how it turned out. Our little spring bird tear tray. I really love the light blue birds. It's really cute. It definitely goes with like the color scheme in my house. But throwing like the little tiny pink flowers in there as well really added a fun touch as well as the greenery. With this spring tray, I definitely always want to try to put some greenery in there and something that's going to give you that spring garden look. But I think these all turned out really cute. So I wanted to give you a little sneak peek around this tear tray before we move on to our next tear tray. What do you guys think? What was your favorite DIY or find for this spring tear tray? You'll have to let me know in the comments below. But this is how it all turned out. And I think it is perfect for my kitchen table for spring. Now, if you're enjoying today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit the like button. It always helps my videos do better in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers and we're getting really close. I also wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You'll find out when I post new content. And I'm also really active on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Now the next theme is a flowers tear tray. Nothing says spring like flowers, right? So I had some really fun ideas using items from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot at Target to put a spring flowers tear tray together. Now the first item I'm going to use, I found this for $3 at Target Dollar Spot and basically it's just a tile of boxwood which is pretty cool. I thought this would make the perfect like you know carpet almost for the top of my tear tray but it doesn't quite fit. Um, the tray that I'm going to decorate first is a two-tier rectangular tray that um, I got on Amazon. And so I'm gonna cut one row off, but I also need it to be one row longer. So just by trimming that, I can actually kind of remake this little um, tile to make it exactly what I need. So I'm just gonna use some hot glue and glue that back on. And I wanna do the top tier of this tier tray. Um, and so I'm gonna need a way to get it on there around the pole. So I'm going to first start by like trying to snip out the center and make room for the pole in the middle with just some heavy duty scissors. And then I'm also going to cut like a little gap on one side just to make sure that I can slide it in. But basically it's going to kind of look like a, a little boxwood carpet for a tear tray. So it's ready to go. So this is the tear tray we're decorating today. I love this tear tray. I have two of these. I have one in white as well in my kitchen. And it fits like a glove now that I customized it. You could probably use any kind of greenery. I thought this one would be extra simple though because it's already all together on a tile. And I thought it would make a really good little backdrop for this. Now, these are the little uh, trellises that they have at the Dollar Tree. These are the plastic ones. I thought that I could use one of these to kind of make like a little garden trellis to go on the top of my tear tray. Um, kind of a big statement piece, but it's definitely going to go with that flower theme. So I just cut off the stakes on the bottom because I don't need those. And then I need greenery. So I found this at the Dollar Tree. They're actually kind of nice and large um, foliage from the Dollar Tree. They're the fern ones. And look at those broad leaves. I think those are gonna work really well. So I'm just gonna basically start a covering up of this trellis with the greenery. Kind of seeing how I like it. If I want them to like go straight up and down. If I want them to go kind of at an angle. And then I'm just going to use twine. I thought that might be the easiest. Um, just to start tying them on. Because I have that great like trellis cage. Um, to attach them to. I thought it might be a little cleaner than hot glue. But just kind of stringing them on there. And I thought a trellis on a cheer tray was a really fun idea. It's not really something that I had seen before. So I'm going to work a third one in here in the middle. And um, I can just tie them all to one spot down there to get me started. 
This one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut down a little bit to make it fit. Kind of cut it down into two pieces and fill up the bottom of this by tying it on as well. And then I wanna do like, not just greenery on this trellis, I'm gonna wanna do flowers, of course, cause the theme of this tear tray is a spring of flowers. But I also want it to be really full with greenery first. And so I also picked up these at the Dollar Tree. These are called little greenery picks. And they're a different kind of leaf. I thought this would be really pretty on there too. Um, it's a slightly a different color, but they are individual picks. So it's gonna be easy like to fill up any holes that we still have left here on the trellis. And you could use whatever you wanted. You could even use some of that like garland um greenery that they have now that would be really cute too just kind of like wrapping it around now since these are individual picks i thought it would be harder to tie these into place and make them stay so i am going to use hot glue on these and just kind of put a dot and glue them down to the cages and we have a nice full little trellis here perfect it get us started with some spring flowers Now the flowers that we're going to use today are not like what you'd think of when you would think of like traditional like artificial flowers from the Dollar Tree. I found something really cool. These are like, they're called wall art, but they're actually like little metal flowers. I think they're so cool. They have a great texture on them. So I picked up a couple of these in different colors. They have little hangers on them, as you can see. And I thought these, this would be really cute. Um, kind of like an abstract a feel for the back of this, some of these metal flowers. So I picked up a pink one and a white one. I thought it'd be kind of cute to kind of stagger them on the little trellis like that. I just got to figure out a way to attach them. Now the top one's easy because it has that little hanger on it and I have the little plastic trellis. So I can just literally sit that one on there, which is just perfect. And then I'm going to kind of attach this one the same way. I do kind of want them to look a little bit staggered on there though, not completely side by side. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one on the top and then kind of like have one kind of up, one kind of down, if you know what I mean. Now I am going to have to attach them a little bit to that to get them to stay in place. Otherwise, they're going to end up like side by side. So I do use a little hot glue on the cage right here. And I'm going to glue that little white metal flower down to it. Now, when you're adding these, make sure you have them the right side up. Like the little brown part is the center of the flower. And then the little flower leaves have that great texture on there. Now I had to figure out a way to attach this to my tear tray. So I am just going to string some twine right here in the center of my trellis. And then I can like sit this down in that greenery that we put in the before. This is gonna be a tear tray that yeah, basically see from the front, not one from all sides. So it's fine to have a nice tall back like that. And then I'm just gonna simply take that twine and tie it around the pole in the center of my tear tray. Super easy, it's gonna be super easy to take apart, but it really gives you a great effect on this tear tray. And it looks great with the boxwood that we put there. Now it's time to decorate. I found this great little light blue little um, ceramic bird at the Dollar Tree. I thought this was perfect for a little spring tear tray. He's so cute. They have them in several colors. I also found a little yellow, a flower, little trinket plate, I guess. Isn't that cute? I love these and I love the colors. I think they're perfect. I've already got the pink. So now I can mix in a little spring blue and a little spring yellow. And I'm just gonna sit it down in that boxwood and it's gonna actually kind of make it stay exactly where I want it to be as well. So the greenery for the bottom definitely worked out well. So I'm also gonna kind of lean this one up against the pole in the center to make sure that it stays straight up. 
but I'm loving the look of it so far. Now, this is some vase filler that I got at Target, actually, like in their home decor aisle. I actually got this on clearance, but look how beautiful these little flowers are. I thought these were so great. They have like little tulips, all different kinds of flowers. I'm going to use this for um, a lot of filler today, but the first thing we're going to start with is I just kind of needed to snag this greenery out of it. But look how cute these are. They are like wrapped with a string. So much detail, so pretty. And um, they, I can't remember exactly how much they were before they went on sale, but definitely look up for a sale on these because they are worth it. Now, the greenery is what I wanted first. I needed a little bit more greenery for the bottom, and there was four of these on there. I'm just gonna kind of scatter one at, at each corner of the bottom of this tear tray. This is a really easy tear tray to put together. The next item is just a yard stake that I got at the Dollar Tree, like with like their spring and garden supplies. Basically, I want to remove like the hanger and the stake on there. And I just want to turn this into a sweet, simple little sign for her tear tray. Now, unfortunately, the stake didn't want to break off evenly. It kind of broke on me, as you saw there, but it was easy enough to get the remnants off. And I just need to do something to it to make it to stand up for my tear tray. It says all things grow with love. I like the color. It's nice, kind of a neutral color. Um, so I just need to make it stand up. Um, you can use whatever you've got. I just happen to have one of these little wood block cubes from the Dollar Tree. So easy peasy. I'm just going to hot glue that to the back and make a little standing sign for my tear tray. There's so many items from the Dollar Tree that you can use to make little signs for your tear tray. Um, and it's just way easier than making your own. So just securing that on the back and this little garden sign is ready to go. Isn't it pretty? It's kind of got like a flower, like light blue. And we're just going to slide this in right here towards the back since it's a taller piece. And it's going to fill up kind of this corner nicely. It was kind of a tight squeeze. But with a little maneuvering, I was able to get it into place. Okay, I also found this the Dollar Tree. It's a little like light green leaf tray. Um, I found this with the little yellow like flower um, tray that we used on the top. And I thought it would be another great like pastel color to use for spring. And the leaf is totally going to go with like the spring flower theme. Um, to make this one stand up, I'm just going to use like a little plate holder I have that a friend made for me. Um, actually, her husband made that with a 3D printer. So <laughs> you can use whatever you have. But I just kind of needed mine to stand up on its side there in the back. Now, more spring signs from the Dollar Tree. This is like a little hanging sign with flowers, butterflies, um, a bee on there. Super cute. These make great signs as well for a tear tray because they're nice and small. I like the looks of this little pink flower. I think it's going to be another pastel color. The flower is totally going to go with our theme. And again, I just need to find a way to make it stand up. This one, I'm just using a wood block. This is actually a giant Jenga block. I get these every spring at five below. They're a great value. You get a ton of wood. So basically, that's all there is to it. Can't get much easier than that, right? And we have a cute little flower sign for the tear tray and a nice contrasting pastel color. Going to kind of put that one over there on the side. And let's keep decorating. I got this at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. It's a little flower um, galvanized metal and it even is on a stand so perfect for a tear tray and then these are water bottle stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree it doesn't matter if these stickers are like glass stickers water bottle stickers whatever you can find it's pretty much gonna work on any surface you want it to basically they're just stickers um, these are actually really kind of a durable like waterproof sticker 
But look how pretty the flowers are. And I thought it would be such an easy idea to decorate the little galvanized metal flower with some of these to brighten it up and give it a lot more character. And I think it's easier to use um, these kind of stickers on the galvanized metal than to try to paint it sometimes. So just trying to see what will fit on here. I love these stickers. I think they're so pretty. Just trying to fill it up as full as I can. Meanwhile, trying to make sure everything kind of stays inside the flower shape. And I think that looks perfect. I love the fact that this is already screwed onto a stand. It is the perfect size for a tear tray. It's gonna fit nicely. I'm gonna display mine kind of right in front here on the bottom of my spring flower tear tray. Now, this is just something I happen to have um, several of these little bird nests with little eggs in them. I have no idea where I got these, but I got them years ago. But I have like four of them, but I love decorating for them. And I thought the little bird nest would look really cute for spring. And just an interesting texture. Now we can start decorating with those beautiful flowers that we got at Target. There's like the yellow one, super cute. I'm gonna kinda scatter those out. I've got like a lot more space to fill here on the bottom than the top, cause the top I had the boxwood, but they also have the little pink tulips, the little white flowers as well. And we're just gonna kinda scatter those around. Trying to kinda like switch up the kinds of flowers that are next to each other a little bit. And I thought this DIY, this DIY tear tray was really easy to put together. I'm hoping that you got some like good spring DIYs for this. It definitely puts me in the mood for spring. And the great thing is, is that you could leave this tear tray up all spring. You don't have to worry about um, taking it down after Easter. You could just leave it up all spring long and it would even blend into summer a little bit but some really fun easy ideas i'm not sure if target is bringing back those flowers for vase fillers again this year or not the ones at the very bottom there but if not you could always use any kind of faux flowers that you could find at dollar tree or wherever but these dollar tree pieces here really shine with like the garden background and any of the kind of greenery like that. And those metal flowers are so pretty. I love those. I've used those a lot in decorating for spring. And you never know what you're going to find in the spring section there at Dollar Tree. They have some really cute little items. But I thought this looked very fun for spring. And I thought it might give you some fun spring tear tray crafting inspiration. I really like this metal flower with all of those stickers on there. They do have some really great spring stickers that you can use in your crafting. And you can always take apart just some of those little spring signs and stuff like that. Make really cute little small um, DIYs for your tear tray. Now, don't go anywhere. We have another spring tear tray coming up for you up next. But first, I wanted to take a quick moment and let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. And it's a quick, easy way to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit the join button below and you can cancel any time. Okay, the next spring tear tray DIY is going to be butterflies. My theme for this one was blue butterflies, but you could do whatever color strikes your fancy. But hopefully you'll get some fun crafting inspiration using butterfly items from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started. To start off, I'm using some of these wall stickers from the Dollar Tree and they are gold. I picked up two packages of those and instead of using ribbon, I wanted to decorate like the trays of my three tier tray. This is my galvanized metal one, um, but I didn't want to use ribbon. And so I thought these little um, metal butterflies would be perfect. Like, cause they're like a metallic gold um, against that like galvanized metal. I thought it'd be really cool. And they fit on there almost perfectly. Um, and so I'm just going to start like 
scattering these around and we're going to go around and decorate all three tiers. I thought that was kind of an unexpected fun way to decorate like a large tier tray like this one. And a lot of you guys ask where I have got this tear tray. I actually got it at Target in their kitchen section, but I think that they clearance them all off um, already because I did buy a second one, I think, um, when they did that. But I love them. They are really big. Um, lots of room for decorating. And I like to use these kind of wreaths to decorate the top tier. They're circular, so they go around the pole perfectly. I actually picked that one up at the Target Dollar Spot. And then I wanted to use some um, flowers from the Dollar Tree. These are the lavender ones. I thought these would be really cute for a butterfly tear tray because it kind of looks like a beautiful like butterfly bush or a flower or something like that that you would find a butterfly landing on. So I'm just going to kind of save the leaves just by pushing them up before I'm just cutting this apart with some of my floral scissors to give myself some little like floral picks that we can use to decorate this tear tray. We're gonna start on the top tier and move our way down, but we're gonna use that little wreath, that boxwood wreath that I got at the Target Dollar Spot on top. And I also want some of this lavender to kind of put in there too, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these so that I have them ready to use for filler on all three of our tear trays. So see how well that fits on the top of a tear tray and it kind of goes over the side. So a fun a little use for a reef. I also put in a few of the little lavender. Now for our first butterfly DIY, I got this great wood butterfly in the crafter square at Dollar Tree. It's kind of large um, for a tear tray, but I thought we could make it work. But I don't really want to outright paint it. I kind of want to stain it. So to do that, I'm just going to use my favorite Caribbean blue color and mix it like half and half with water just to give myself a blue stain. Um, you can do this with any kind of acrylic paint. It works out well. And the reason I did that is because I kind of want that wood grain to come through. I kind of want it to look kind of old and antique and distressed. So just using a makeup sponge, I'm using that thin paint to go all over my little butterfly. And I think that gives kind of a more fun effect than just straight out painting it. I like the, how it looks when it dries. And then I just use a paper towel to kind of wipe off the excess paint. Now this is a tear tray and it is kind of large. So I was worried that you'd be able to see it from the other side. So we're gonna have to just flip it over and do the same thing here on the other side. Now, sometimes this like raw wood from the Dollar Tree kind of has like a natural, like darker wood grain in there. And this one kind of did uh, towards the bottom. You can see like kind of the brown striping. I kind of liked that. So I kind of wanted more of that. So I'm gonna use some Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and kind of give some of my own distressing to this as well. Just kind of working in one direction kind of giving it that old feel again. And don't worry when you're distressing, if you use too much, you can always go over it with a baby wipe and kind of wipe off any of the remaining. And I think it gave me kind of a cool finish. You could, if you wanted like a more colorful butterfly tear tray, you could get really creative with, with this and like kind of make it multicolored or a particular butterfly if you want, but I'm totally kind of digging that blue a butterfly theme. And we're just going to kind of lay it here against the pole on the top, down inside of that greenery, kind of peeking out. Super cute and fun. Okay, the next item was actually a wind chime that I got at Dollar Tree as well. I just want the cute little galvanized metal butterfly here. So it's kind of just a matter of disassembling it, which is easy to do. Like the little bell was attached um, just by a chain and like so is the hanger. So it's just a matter of like bending the metal a little bit and you're gonna have a great little galvanized metal butterfly. I thought this would be a cute piece. It's just the right size for a tear tray. And then it's got like the blue and the green butterfly on that. 
I did kind of want to switch up the color to kind of make it match my blue butterfly theme though. So to protect the galvanized metal, I just put some paper towel down in and then I'm just gonna go in and kind of paint like their teal blue, um, my Caribbean blue color that I liked. I thought that would be pretty. Just to kind of make it coordinate because most of our butterflies today are gonna be like this blue color. But if you like the colors that they have on those already, you could just uh, leave it as is, just removing the chains and stuff like that. I kind of like the two-tone look though of the blue and the green together. And that's how it looks. And we're gonna put this on the top tier as well on the other side opposite from the large woodwind. Now I wanted some blue flowers to go with my blue butterflies and I found these great flowers at the Dollar Tree. I just love the blue color. Um, it's kind of a fun like beachy color of blue. It goes great with my decor. So again, just cutting down like little pieces to make Great little filler for a butterfly tray. Flowers definitely go with the spring vibe, but of course go with the butterflies as well. So um, we're on the second tier now. We're just gonna start scattering some of those little blue flowers all around. They're so cute and the perfect size, I think. Okay, next DIY, I picked this up at the Crafter Square as well. It is a little light up butterfly. They have these in like um, all sorts of different types of shapes since I was doing butterflies I tried to find anything I could that was butterfly so I'm gonna stain it the same exact way we did the large wood butterfly by using that Caribbean blue acrylic mixed with water and it kind of made it easier you know these things can be a little bit more challenging to paint because there are all like of the little nooks and crannies inside and around. I did take the little battery operated candle out before I started staining it. So I didn't get any on that. But since it's a stain and not a paint, it doesn't have to be a perfect paint job, which made it easier for getting inside all these different areas. So just kind of giving it a once over with that and then wiping off the excess with a paper towel. Easy peasy, we have a cute little blue butterfly. And then I'm also going to distress it slightly with some antique wax by Waverly to kind of give it that same antique blue vibe that we did on the um, larger one. And then we have our little pop in battery operated candle and it even lights up. So super cute. This is the perfect size for a tear tray. It'd be cute whether you use a little light inside of it or not. Okay, next item from the Crafter Square. I picked up one of these galvanized metal uh, butterflies with a stand. Um, just the same as the flower one that I used for my flower spring tear tray video. And then I picked up some wall stickers and this great like, it's like a floral pattern, but it's mainly like a lot of greenery on there. And I thought that would be cute. I like to decorate the galvanized metal with stickers. I find that is a fun way to decorate it, give it some fun without having to try to paint it. I find that when you paint the galvanized metal, they scratch really easily. So I cut it out larger than I needed and um, then I stuck it on there. And then I'm just gonna go in and trim it down to the butterfly shape with scissors. I thought it would be easier to cut it after the fact than to try to get it just the right size. So just trimming that down. And this is gonna give me kind of a cool little leaf wallpaper effect there. Now this middle section was a little bit more tricky cause I couldn't get scissors in there. So I just used a razor blade to cut that along the bottom of my butterfly. It gave me a perfect cut and I guess you can always kind of draw it on there and cut it down to size but then you're gonna have to like get it lined up perfectly when you go to put it on there um, um I am gonna also try to cover like some of the top parts of the butterfly with some more of that greenery and a flower just for fun just kind of a fun effect on this sign and you know I love these signs because they're already screwed on to a base that's perfect for standing on its own in a tear tray. 
and I have filled this up with flowers. I also put some of that lavender in there that we cut up from before. Definitely looks like a butterfly vibe of flower. And this is the perfect size for the second tear tray. Looking good. Um, they have lots of butterfly stuff at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, obviously. I picked up one of these little wood boxes as well. It has a little butterfly cutout in the lid. I didn't want the wood to be raw wood, though, and I want my butterfly, butterfly to be blue. So I thought I would stain it, but I didn't want like a dark stain that you traditionally get from Antique Wax by Waverly. So I kind of made a wash by mixing it half and half with water like I did with the acrylic paint to give me this really a light color stain. And then wiping off the excess with a paper towel. Look at that beautiful wood grain on there. I'm going to do the same thing with a little box lid. I often see these boxes at the Dollar Tree Crafter Square, and I often avoid them because I don't know really what I would use them for, but they do work well for a tear tray because it's going to make a cute little box that you can kind of stand on its side if you want it to. But we got that light stain color all over, kind of a natural wood. And then I told you I wanted my butterfly to be blue. I thought the easiest way to do that would be to just use a paint pen. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. This is a paint pen, I think from Target, um, just like in a light blue color. And simply just like coloring with a marker, it's just going to fill in the entire butterfly. If you wanted your butterfly to be multicolor, you could totally do that effect too. But I think this is nice and simple. And I think it's going to look great over here on the other side of my second tier. And kind of like just sit it in there like that. A cute little butterfly box. Super fun and interesting. Okay, I needed some more greenery and I wanted to start on the bottom tier. This is another one of those wreaths from the Target Dollar Spot, but I need to cut this one because I'm doing it on the bottom tier and I kind of want to wrap it around the pole in the middle to kind of give me that greenery effect like a shrub or something that a butterfly would be on. And it's kind of wired, so it kind of keeps its shape as well. We're gonna use more of that filler that we cut up earlier, the lavender and the little blue flowers from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna kind of scatter those in there as well. Kind of giving me that like butterfly bush look. Now I found a, another butterfly at the Crafter Square. They're easy to find if you look. This is the little frame one. Um, it has uh, the little frame, so I'm just taking that apart. I thought it'd be fun to put like a flower in there instead of a picture um, to kind of go with the spring vibe. We're gonna have the little butterfly with a little flower in the frame. So the first thing we're gonna do is stain it all over with that diluted, um, antique wax by Waverly to give my give my um, butterfly that same light wood stain that we used before. And you know, you can also use Dollar Tree has a brown paint that when you mix it with water makes a pretty nice stain as well. I have used that recently in one of my DIY videos and it worked out pretty well if you can't find the antique wax by Waverly, but I get mine at my local Walmart. Now, I was trying to figure out how I was going to pull this off because it just kind of had like a picture in there, but nothing really sturdy. So I decided to use, I had some like cardstock poster board sitting around. So using the little picture reference they had in there um, for size, I'm just going to use that to cut down the cardboard to kind of give me a more solid surface because it doesn't really, you know, have like a wood board or anything back there. It's just very lightweight how they put it together and pop that in there. Now, I don't want my um, little flower to be that brown color. That's one of those craft board pieces from the Crafter Square. And so using a makeup sponge and some of that Caribbean blue paint, we're going to paint this into a cute little blue flower. So instead of having a blue butterfly on this one, we're going to have a blue flower with like the stained wood butterfly. Super cute. And again, this is the perfect size for a tear tray as well. It's gonna be a nice height for the bottom of my tear tray where I have a little bit more room to work around. And I'm just going to hot glue that down onto that poster board that we cut down. 
And we have a little flower and a little butterfly frame. I think this was really cute. It was super easy to put together as well. We're going to stand it up down here. Kind of working around all my filler. Okay, the next item is not really a DIY, kind of a find. I picked up a galvanized metal butterfly tray at the Crafter Square. And this tray was going on my kitchen table. So I kind of needed a holder for my salt and pepper shakers. And I thought this would be the perfect thing. So instead of having it hanging, I'm just going to have mine laying flat. So no need for the little hanger in there. So I simply just cut it out. I'm gonna leave it the galvanized metal. It can actually fit like four things in here. I really only need it to fit two, but that's okay because you, you can always put them back in a different place if you wanted to. Just kind of a fun, whimsical little butterfly tray for my tear tray being on a table. So this little piece is decorative, but also a functional and I need it to lay flat so it can kind of do its job. And then I'm just going to kind of stack my salt and pepper shakers in there. Super fun. I always like to try to do something fun with my napkins or my salt and pepper shaker on that one. I also found this great little wooden butterfly from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. Like I said, they have tons of options if you want to do a butterfly theme for a tear tray. We're gonna stain this one the same way we did a couple of our other pieces with that like diluted Caribbean blue paint and give it a nice stain all over. Super easy to do, especially with one of those little makeup sponges. Love those for projects like these because you don't use too much paint. Now, I'm also gonna do like the little base of it as well. When I started with this piece, I thought I was going to just use it kind of like a decorative piece, but it actually evolved a little bit, but um, I'll take you through all the steps. I wanted to decorate it again with kind of a leaf pattern, kind of like we did on that metal one. And so I got some of these rub-on transfers at Dollar Tree at the Crafter Square, and I thought we could do something fun on here with some of the greenery. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out some pieces that I think will look cute on there and kind of give a, like a wallpaper effect on it as well. So it's not just a plain blue butterfly. It's gonna have a little floral fun on here. So I cut all the pieces down individually. That way I can put them exactly where I want them and they're just peel and stick. Sometimes I like to use my little Cricut tool from the Dollar Tree to scrape those down. Sometimes these are like really easy to put down and sometimes they're a struggle. You have to kind of put them back down and scrape some more. Kind of depends on if you get lucky or not. I can't really determine um, what makes them better or not. But if you do mess up, you can always lay it back down and try to fix it. But I want to go all over with that leaf pattern decorating the front of this butterfly. Now, when I said that this project evolved, you're about to see why. I decided instead of just a decorative butterfly with the greenery on here, this would be the perfect size to make like a napkin holder since it is going on my kitchen table. And so I happen to have two of these. And so I'm gonna do the same blue stain on a second one. And I thought I could put like the two bases together and it's gonna be like the perfect size to hold napkins. So not just decorative, this one's gonna be functional as well. But first I need to get the back all stained with this light blue paint and then we can put the two together. Nothing like a little DIY butterfly and napkin holder. This would be really cute for a party decor as well. And so I'm just gonna simply hot glue them base to base here at the bottom and it was a good thing that I had picked up two of these kind of by a mistake but it kind of paid off in the end because it made a beautiful functional piece just squeezing those together allowing the hot glue to dry and then we can fill it up with napkins I didn't have any spring napkins surprisingly because I DIY with those things all the time so I'm gonna kind of just use whatever I have I actually had some short living ones 
Dee should be coming back to Dollar Tree any day. I've just been getting a link on my affiliate for those. Super exciting. And um, we're going to put this down here at the bottom next to our salt and pepper shakers. Um, another decorative, a functional piece. So cute and fun. I love that. Okay, I'm ready for another DIY. How about you? Now, when I told you Crafter Square has tons of butterfly things, I wasn't playing around because look, they have these as well. This is like an MDF version, um, a little bit different size and vibe going on. I wanted to cover it with something tropical like leaves to kind of go with my spring greenery flower vibe. And I picked up this wrapping paper, actually it's wrapping paper from the Dollar Tree and this like kind of tropical print. I thought it might be kind of fun. You never know what I'm gonna cover something with. And then I just turn the butterfly over on the back of it and draw the butterfly shape onto it. And then I can just use my scissors to cut the wrapping paper down to size. Just another fun, whimsical way to cover some of these boring butterflies um, with some fun spring patterns. And I am just going to decoupage it on with a little Mod Podge, kind of a thin layer because it is kind of a thin wrapping paper. I didn't want to go too crazy or get any bubbling and just lay the butterfly on there. Definitely a fun and unexpected print. You could also use like some of that removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree as well. If you don't get it on there just perfectly, you can always use a sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree to like give you that perfect cut anywhere there's any areas that don't fit perfect. And there we go. I'm also gonna go over the top of it with another thin coat of Mod Podge to make sure that it is sealed, has a nice matte finish. And then I kinda wanna use this on the bottom tier as well. Um, I am going ahead to have to DIY a stand of some sort to make it stand up. And so I thought just a couple of these little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree might work. Just kind of gluing one on each wing. Kind of hidden, kind of out of the way, but functional because it's going to make it stand up on the tear tray. And this is a nice size butterfly as well. It's going to fit well down here where I have a little bit of room. And you won't be able to see the stands because they're going to kind of fit down between all of the greenery and flowers that we've put in there. And I think this is just a really fun um, theme for a spring tear tray. I love the blue color. If that's not your vibe, you could totally take this any direction. You can have orange butterflies. You could have like, you know, multiple colors. But I love how many things that I was able to find at the Dollar Tree. The butterfly selection was great. And they seem to have most of these items like year round, not even just spring things because they were like almost all, you know, like just in crafter square. And I love the surprise of like the little metallic gold butterflies all along my tears. So what do you guys think about my little spring butterfly tear tray? I had a lot of fun putting this one together. And so many items that I was able to find from the Dollar Tree. It was pretty easy to do. And just another fun little idea for a spring tear tray for you. So today we did spring birds. We did spring flowers. And we also did spring butterflies. So hopefully you got lots of crafting inspiration for your spring tear tray. Whether you're going to do one, two, or three. Three. I love the idea of doing just a seasonal one like this that you can leave up all season long. Okay, you guys have made it all the way to the final reveal. Thank you so much for joining me today here at Crafty Beach. I really appreciate it. When you watch the whole video, it really helps. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button. Comment your favorite tear tray down in the comments below or just come say hello. Hello, And don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal. Just close your eyes. 
let them rest I know it's hard to fall asleep But do your best Cause there's a place That I go to When I want to hide from all the shades of blue Cause at times I think of leaving So much for watching and I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my crafty beach bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube thank you so much to Pamela Bergeron I am Mojo Jojo Melinda Elizabeth Jamie Job Susan Edmonds Carrie R Tracy Knight Nancy Wunner Julie Miller Tammy Coates Janae Farrington Pamelia Wren Maria Grace Donna Schreiner Sandy C and Iris Cornelius. Thank you so much for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Every little bit helps. Now, if you'd like more crafting inspiration, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting.